Well, Chuck, what do you think about the situation? Well, to me, the first situation is the, the murder weapon and the evidence that we have to accentuate the, uh, the, the murder weapon and the seat of the crime. Well, there's about three people missing in the county. I expect there's foul play. But uh, what we need to do is uh, bring the police forensic team in to uh, investigate this thing. You know, in this county, uh, the expenses and all, and we're a poor county, I don't think this would be feasible at this time. I think uh, this David Sloan situation is uh, rather much more important. Well, you may be right. Uh, we're just going to have to go with the resources that we already have. I told you, we need information now. Get the point today. We need the information today. You understand our position with this case? It's too important on us. Now is the day, right now, today. The information is needed today. Mr. Dembo was on the police department in Garden City in Michigan, and uh, he was just too rough. I had to let him go. This is a poor county and a small sheriff's department. Good men are hard to find. Well, maybe it's too poor when it gets to the point that you have to hire bullies for lawmen. Chuck, did you get the information out of them you needed? Yes, I believe I got all the information I needed from the fellow. I bet, I bet you did. Yes, he was responsible for the death of three people, but I took care of him by putting his lights out. At that point, that I knew for sure that he was responsible. You know, Chuck, you can't get by with that in law enforcement. Yeah, Chuck, I heard about that. But he killed a man in a bank robbery. Later, and they made the charges stick. Well, maybe they could have made the charges stick if Officer Denbo had gone about it in the right way.
Well, now that we have three people missing from this community, and I feel that it's, in all cases that it's murder. Well, there's no evidence of that. They could have all just left town. I don't believe they have. That's why that we have called in David, Detective David Sloan. Yeah, they say Sloan works off instinct. That's a good choice. Yeah, Detective Dave Sloan. He worked with us in law enforcement. He was good. Yeah, I remember Sloan. You know, he's a deputy sheriff and uh, he real good. Maybe he was a good deputy. And maybe he'd done his job out in the open uh, very well. But that didn't qualify him to do uh, special investigations or, or in-depth investigations. Maybe he's not qualified for that. Well, gentlemen, how are y'all? Fine. Well, I'm glad to see you made it, Sloan. Sloan's good to see you. He's seen you in a while. Well, uh, it's good to be working again. Well, uh, Chuck, how do you like that little more Beautiful picture. Beautiful picture. In fact, I'm pretty much fed up with it. Well, I heard they kicked you out of Garden City. You know, you got a little rough with some of those people across the corner here. I believe I did. At least to try in one case. Well, I'll tell you, this is a small town, a small sheriff's department, and uh, we need you. What I'm saying is, I know the guys, like, uh, you know, you try to get the information on this killer, and they turn him loose, and he robbed this bank and killed him. Uh, I don't know what's right. I think they're doing a good job of saying that uh, the citizens are uh, a whole lot safer with you than uh, without. Well, the creed that we take as a law enforcement officer, Try our best. Sometimes it's not the best in the image of it. So I say the society that we have today. But uh, as law enforcement officers, we try, like I say, we just try our best. Well, I speak about the images of the problems. Image. You know, as law enforcement people, I guess we've got to get a sample for the citizens. Well, uh, Officer Scott, I want to thank you personally for offering to work with me on this case. Well, I'm just thinking about the community, the uh the reason they gave me this badge was, this gold detective's badge was to uh, better the community, but I just don't see how you're going to make it. I know they've uh, offered you room and board and your expenses, but that's not going to be enough. Well, uh, I've been off this job working with horses, and if we ever get to the bottom of this case, uh, I'll get it full time. Thoroughbreds, I presume. And other mixes. But uh, really, uh, I love that type of work. And uh, I feel we can just get to the bottom of this, uh, I'll be happy. There's somebody else that works with horses once. Chuck, I don't wrong you for bringing Mr. Sloan in, but we have no proof of a crime. Cole, it's my gut feeling. I feel that this is 
Yes, this is the way it is. Well, I feel we've got nothing to lose with the arrangements we've got with the taxpayers. It won't cost that much anyway. Well, I feel it's necessary to spend more tax money for proper training and equipment because, as you know, a schooled officer and a well-trained officer is a much better officer. Hey, Kay, let me go home and wash these horses off, will man? Fine. I'll meet you then. Well, what uh, Chuck has not found out inside. Well, it looks to me that like this is one of the places where they found one of those deadbeat dads. Well, uh, I guess we need to start looking for it up. Good idea. Take it from right here. Okay. <clears throat> you know, uh, I ran into a man at the bus stop uh, years ago. I just felt the danger. Just like death in this man. He just, uh, he took my strength away from me. So uh, I walk around to the front of the bus station to avoid it. Five years later, I saw his picture in the paper. He'd killed one. he chopped up with a hatchet. After that, I started going with a gut feeling. I just think if uh, the killer is in this community, I think we can flush him out. Just going with gut feeling and instinct. What do you think? I see, I understand your point. The uh, inner feeling that you have, like you say, the gut feeling. Like, I'm a little under hard to understand, but it's there in front of you. But you just can't pinpoint it. Well, you know, I don't know if we're, it's good or bad, but if he stays in this county, he might kill somebody else. But around here, yet if he goes to another county, he might just get by with it. He might just keep on killing. Very true. And we might not be able to stop it. Look, Chuck, all we got to go on is three people missing. There's no evidence of foul play at all. Well, that's right, Chuck, but look, these three men have a history of leaving. Staying gone, take John Owens, for instance. Left for three years, nobody heard anything out of him. Gone with another woman. She dumped him, dropped him. He come on home to his wife. We got a link here, Chuck. All three men missing have a history of leaving. Well, my gut feeling that it is. What we got is nothing. What we got is all in Officer Denbo's mind. It's one thing to live in a fantasy world and have conspiracy theories, 
But it's another thing. We've got real crimes and real investigations, and this is reality. And we've got to get busy. We don't have time for fantasy. Uh, I'm Officer Denbo, and uh, is there any possibility that you might have any information on this case that we're working on, these three uh, missing people? No, sir, not right at the present time, but if I find out any information or anything, I'll try to get in contact with you. Thank you very much, Liz. We're really in a quandary over this case of what we're, we're, we're working on. Uh -huh, I understand. Mm -hmm. I Thank you. what you mean. I'm Detective Dave Sloan, and I'm looking for answers. Hey, if you're looking for trouble, you came to the right place, buddy. That's when I learned John. <laughs> Just like I said before, I'm looking for answers. You know, Officer Scott, I've got the feeling that uh, you just don't want me on this case. Well, it's nothing personal, Sloan. It's just that there's a lot of academy officers who've spent many years to get to their positions, and they deserve their positions. I heard you did a pretty good job as a deputy sheriff. Only trouble was it wasn't much investigating. You went out there and you caught him red-handed in the act on patrol or a complaint was compiled and the evidence was right there. No, you're a good regular working deputy but as an investigator I have my doubts. I have my doubts. Look, mister, I'm just trying to get to the bottom of a missing persons case. Now, if you don't answer my questions, you don't have to start trouble. There's no middle way. You know, Sloan, here you go with your gut feeling again. There's innocent people being sent to prison on hearsay evidence. True, there is a difference. And there's some that'll do anything to break a big case. Yeah, and they don't care who they hurt to get there. Well, Sloan, tell me why you're different. I try to rule the suspect out. I don't want him to be guilty. I try to prove his innocence in my mind. Yet when things don't add up, when my conscience tells me difference, I just stay with him in most cases. So he'll give himself away. Well, you can slice it any way you want to, Sloan, but I think you're talking out of your ears. Well, what do you think? Well, I think if we let our suspect there know a little bit more than what we know, We'll trip his hand, and we'll be able to get the suspect. Well, if they're guilty, it would be a man or woman. Maybe they'll hang themselves. Let the crime fit the punishment. Like the good book says, good versus evil. I think... That's our best chance.
crime does not pay. It's up to us to see that it don't. Well, Sheriff, don't you think it's been a murder in the community? Now, I know you don't want it to be no murder, but don't you feel that it is? It's not important what I think. Look, it's our job to protect the citizens against rape, robbery, murder. We can't shut down the whole force just on kind of this case. Well, there's no signs of foul play here. The people missing are uh, street people, hobos and bums. They have a history of drifting around from town to town. No, no foul play here. I think Officer Denbo is dreaming again, and I think uh, his imagination's gone a little too far. say for today? Well, you know, today is a beautiful day down here at uh, Charlotte Barn, and uh, we're going to have another Milo Ho Western film show, and gunfights, and singing, and we uh, good food to eat, and uh, it's really got a lot of little bit of breeze out here today. We're going to have a great time. Yes, I caught the first show with the Rocky River Cowboys. Look, uh, there's some people missing that have been attending here. Is it anything that uh, you can tell me about? Your name, sir? I'm Dean Baker from Dallas, North Carolina. And uh, this is the first time I've been here, but I'm a member of the Saddle Pals. I, I'm one of them. Love, I love, know a lot of these guys here. And uh, really love the Cowboys. 
Yes, I heard that Will Carpenter was a real cowboy until he took to the bottom. Well, he's missing. And if you've seen him at any of the shows, uh, is there anything that uh, you can tell me about? What's your name, sir? T. Shore from Greensboro, North Carolina. Well, it's really been great talking with you, and it's good to see I you. I come down here every time they have one of these questions. I enjoy them very much. I appreciate all you people. Yeah, it's good to meet new faces and new people all the time. Good good friendship, good fellowship. Well, Mr. Shore, I understand that you started a home for homeless people. Look, uh, I understand that John Randolph used to stay there. He's been missing. Is there anything that uh, you can tell me about? This case has been ruled suicide. There's no accountable for the rest of the three bodies. Oh, uh, there's a link. See, all four had quick tempers. It's possible that the killer has a resentment towards quick-tempered people and uh, people that use vertical abuse. Well, I don't agree. People have been falsely accused on hearsay information just because someone thought they were guilty. What you're saying is true. Yet I've questioned the victim's family. He was afraid of hype. Now, I just think that if he really wanted to commit suicide, he just wouldn't kill himself in that way. Well, when the victim attempted suicide, he did it with sleeping pills. He left the empty bottles in plain view for his wife to see. He was counting on her to see them. He wasn't wanting to die. He knows she saved him. For a better judgment, I think we should call in the forensic team. You know, they don't expect foul play. They want to go on with the funeral, get him in the ground. I've got a friend that is a forensic expert. That's where I came from. Now I can go back to the scene where the man was supposed to have jumped. And if there is another party, if there's any signs of foul play, if I get any evidence, it will show up on DNA. After the tests come back from the lab, we'll know who the killer is even if we can't prove it. What we got is nothing. What we got is all in Officer Denbo's mind. It's one thing to live in a fantasy world and have conspiracy theories, but it's another thing. We've got real crimes and real investigations, and this is reality. And we've got to get busy. We don't have time for fantasy. Howdy, ma'am. Uh, I'm Detective uh, Dave Sloan. I know this is a bad time, but I would like to talk to you about uh, the death of your husband. From the information that I have, uh, I just do not feel that he committed suicide. I feel that uh, there's foul play. My husband was a good law officer until one night at his 
went in and on the drug bust, and he just couldn't force himself to pull the trigger, and his deputy got killed. Mr. Sloan, have you ever been married? I must confess, I didn't come back to the country just to help Officer Denbo with this case. But uh, I was wanting to settle down and start a new life for myself and possibly uh, get married. You know, Sheriff, I just don't think Mr. Owens jumped from that two-story building. I just don't believe he'd commit suicide that way. You know, I agree. But if we could just find a suspect and turn him over to Big Chuck, that's all, that's all she wrote, boy. He'd take care of it. He'd get the answers. Mm-hmm. You come here, somebody's gonna die. I'm warning you. Look, I got some questions to ask about Owen Carter. Now, what can anybody tell me? Come on. Come on. I want to hear your back snap. Chuck, uh, I just don't think that uh, anyone was intentionally murdered at this park with women and children here. Now, it could have been a scuffle that led to a death. Yet I don't feel that uh, it was planned. Yet I feel that we're on to something. Just like all these fights that I've had uh, in these bars where I've been asking questions. I just think that someone is provoking it. And it could be the killer that is behind it. I just feel that he's turning the tide on me. And if we don't get to him in time, I'm afraid that he's going to get me. I've also uh, got the bogus searching for a body or anything that seems strange uh, in the river. Sheriff, I think Sloan is on to something. I think he knows more than he makes out to know. He just wants proof of a shadow of a doubt, a foul play before he accuses anybody. Looks like the boater found the body here, right here, this spot here. Well, the question is, uh, was the victim killed here, or was he killed at the park with the taken? I mean, what it all amounts to is if we could trace the killer back to the park, we might have some. We might have a suspect, but there's no witnesses with any account here. Well, I guess then we need the forensic maybe to come in and help us with the body then. We got something to go on now. We got something to go on. There could be a killer in this county. Who's to say? Well, it's just a bad situation. 
Now, if he stays in this county, he could kill again. But if we don't catch him and he leaves, he'll be out of our hair. He might go to another county and kill, but we can't catch him. We need to get him. Mrs. Carter, thank you so much for having coffee with me. You'll have to excuse my husband. Ever since our son passed away, he, he buries himself in his work. You talk about your husband as if he is still alive. It's good to cherish his memories. Yet uh, your husband just does not fit the profile of these people that are missing. I feel that him being an ex-lawman, he knew something. He was on to the killer. And I feel that's what cost him his life. Is there anything that he talked with you about that could help me with this case? You know, if there is foul play, if it's someone within law enforcement, they would be on top of the game. That we don't need. If they knew that we were onto them, by now they would be going in another direction. Something we don't need. Well, uh, that might be what the problem is now. They might just be going in another direction. When a murder has been committed, we question all family members to clear I feel we should take the same process uh, with law enforcement officers as well. I mean, what we got here is unsolved crime in a small community. We should make sure that we're clean. Are you trying to say that corruption is in this department? Let's just say that there is a killer within law enforcement. He's on top of the game. He know just how much ground to take and when to back off. He would know when he's got the green light and when to change his plans. He'd be hard to catch. Sloan, I feel you're creating problems. Yeah, I think, uh, I feel you're giving law enforcement a bad reputation because you've got a, you think that someone in law enforcement could be involved or responsible for these missing people. Well, I feel that it needs to be investigated because we've got no leads. We've got no leads because it's all in your mind. Happy birthday to the king. <laughs>
I guess you're looking forward to the gun fight today. Absolutely, that's why I came for it. Yes, I really enjoyed uh, the band and Milo and them singing happy birthday together. Look, what can you tell me about this body that was found in the river? I understand that you need a man. Foul play. I don't think there is any foul play, but it's possible if there is foul play, I think it's the work of uh, a railroad killer, a copycat railroad killer, like the one in Texas. I still don't believe there really is any foul play. Nope. Don't believe it. Well, sure, Sergeant Scott thinks there's bad foul play. Now, he thinks it's a hobo killer, a hobo that rides the rails and comes back and kills again. Looks like that case in Texas. I would suggest that we post more security at the railway stations. Well, why do you feel that it's a railroad killer like uh, the one in Texas? It's, uh, it's because he can come in town, do his thing without being seen, make a clean getaway, and be gone, and there's no suspicion, nobody sees anything, and he can be far away with, by the next day, and then come back the day after. And uh, it could be a Hobo, a bum, a paying customer. I think we ought to check all out of towners more closely. All out of towners. <laughs>
chunk of all the forensic teams have been able to come up with so far is that the man was uh, killed at the river. His body was not transported. Now, uh, they're not ruling out foul play, uh, yet they feel it could be accident. The man could have been hit with a stray bullet from the hunting party. Do you think it's a case of that railroad killer, like out in Texas? I don't know. I'm just afraid that that's just what uh, someone wants us to find. Thank you so much for inviting me out for coffee. It's just like I said before, I think that your husband was on to the killer. I think that's what cost him his life. I just feel that the killer thinks that I know more on him than I really do. And if I don't get to him before he gets to me, I'm in serious trouble. Well, just take care of yourself, Dave.
Well, they said you were done for, but I see you're, uh, you're gonna be okay. Well, I'm glad that you came to check on me. Officer Scott. Look, this silent treatment has got to go. Understand what we're talking about. No, this silent treatment, no. This case has been going on for too long. The information is needed. Too much involved. People's lives are at stake. Give us a break. We got the information right today. I think we better get this Dave Sloan out of the way. Or he's trouble. Well, we can't shut down the force just on kind of this one case, okay? Thank you so much for having coffee with me. I understand your loneliness, the loss of your husband. Yet I suffer loneliness in a different way. I feel everyone needs friendship, companionship. Thank you very much. You know, it's really good to have a Christian dog. Thank you very much for inviting me out, for the coffee that I've had with you, for your friendship and giving me a chance to get acquainted with your dogs. I feel that you should always cherish the memories of your husband and never let him die. Yet I feel that we should all go on with our lives and look for tomorrow. Everyone needs friendship. They need companionship. There may never be anyone to take your husband's place. Yet, it's good to have friends to turn to. I just want to encourage you to 
going with your life because um, it's a gift. And I feel that uh, you should live it. I've been holding my own with the horses now, and uh, my double vision uh, is about to clear up. I'm ready to go back to work on the front line now. I'm just saying that the killer kills because he likes it. He could very well be a law enforcement officer or ex-law enforcement officer if not in this county, another county. Explain yourself, Sloan. Okay, now take the deadbeat dads by killing them and putting them in the bottom of the river. There is no reason for anyone to expect foul play. There's no reason. Think about it. These men are running from the law, they're running from their families, they don't want to be found. So what you going to do? If it's foul play, who's to say that they didn't leave town? You're right. This does need to be investigated. By all means, it needs to be investigated. But I think you're on the wrong track. I think this is a copycat, a copycat railroad killer. What we got here, Chuck, is uh, three missing people and two dead bodies. The man that fell from the building, it was ruled a suicide. The man that was shot to death at the river, it was a real accident, possibly a stray bullet from a hunting park. If there is foul play, if it's someone within law enforcement, they would be on top of the game. That we don't need. If they knew that we were onto them, by now they would be going in another direction. Something we don't need. Well, uh, I feel that we are on to it. I just feel that the same person that started that room in the bars about Sloan being trouble, it's the same person that shoved Mr. Carter off that two-story building. And it almost worked. I mean, that barroom bully, he about did me in. Yet I feel that he shoved Mr. Carter off that two-story building himself because uh, had anybody else to have done it, he would have caught up with it. I've got a suspect, just a gut feeling, nothing more. If I'm wrong, I'll be dismissed from this case. If I'm right, if I make him think now, I know more on him than I really do. I just feel that he'll come out to me the same way that he came out to Mr. Carter. Chuck, uh, we're the only ones that uh, believe it's foul play. Time will tell. You know, Officer Scott, I seen that look in your eyes the day that I woke up in the hospital. You was hoping that I wouldn't wake up or I would wake up as a vegetable. I know that you didn't put that man on me at the bar, but at the same time, uh, 
just hope he had put the lights out before you got a chance to break it up. You was hoping that I, I was unconscious and just glad that I went into a coma. Yes, just hoping it'd be for good. Where, where's your mind at in Disneyland? Make believe world? What have you been doing, watching too many TV detective shows? It doesn't work that way. You just, uh, if all you got is your gut feeling, that only works once in a while. You, you shouldn't be working with us. You should be back in investigator school, learning to, how to uh, properly investigate. You should be back in school, learning how to be a complete lawman. I just don't feel that this killer kills for publicity. He feels that he's got a purpose. He could be a law enforcement officer. He could be an outstanding citizen in the eyes of everyone in this community. He feels that he has a purpose. Look, Sloan, we don't know that there's a killer. All what we're dealing with here is uh, street people, hobos, bums, deadbeat dads, drifters. People have a history of moving around. There's no way to keep track of them. And if there's anybody that's sick here, it's you. I just feel that the killer feels that he's helping the community. By getting some of these uh, would-be criminals out of the way before they commit the crime to harm others. Look, Sloan, I've been in law enforcement quite a few years. And speaking from the professional point of view, you just don't see cases like this. You must be in Fantasyland or Disney World or in some kind of make-believe world, Sloan. You just don't see cases like this. Y'all can slice it however you want to. It could be the railroad killer. But I don't think so. I just don't think so. No, it's not the railroad killer because you don't want it to be the railroad killer. Well, uh, Officer Scott, I think we're going to solve this case. I've been collecting samples of DNA from uh, each missing person, the place they were last seen. Now, if the opposite party's DNA matches up, to all these things where each missing person was last seen, I think we got a killer. I've got a few more collections to make, and then I'm going to send them off to my friend in uh, Maryland. He's a forensic expert. Well, uh, 
Sergeant Scott, I've been expecting you. You know, uh, this lies Miss Mercy did a lot of smoking this old car. I just felt he left enough DNA behind to convict uh, the killer. Well, Sloan, what triggered you off? Well, Officer Scott, I knew that you were guilty all the time. I mean, your stories just, uh, they didn't match up. Uh, I'm sure you've been on the other side where you've been questioning the suspect and uh, you knew they were lying. You had access to the files, the deadbeat dads, and you kept this information from the department. All these were a species that needed to be eliminated. They were scum of the earth. They, they needed to be put out of the way. What gives you the right to uh, set yourself up as judge and execution? Judges are not executing. The vigilantes are way behind the time. Look at all the lives that could be saved. You could execute them before they do any more crimes. I'm sorry I'm going to have to kill you, Sloan, but you just got in the way. I say that you're not using the weapon assigned to you by the department. I'd be foolish to do that. No, I'm going to have to put a bullet in your head between your eyes and dump you in the bottom of the river with the rest of the victims. Goodbye, son. Sloan in on this case. You had a feeling it'd work out, didn't you? One of those gut feelings. <laughs>
Yet uh, your husband just does not fit the profile of these people that are missing. I feel that him being an ex lawman, he knew something. He was on to the killer. And I feel that's what cost him his life. Is there anything that he talked with you about that could help me with this case? You know, if there is foul play, if it's someone within law enforcement, they would be on top of the game. That we don't need. If they knew that we were onto them, by now they would be going in another direction. Something we don't need. Well, uh, that might be what the problem is now. They might just be going in another direction. When a murder has been committed, we question all family members to clear. I feel we should take the same process uh, with law enforcement officers as well. I mean, what we got here is unsolved crime in a small community. We should make sure that we're clean. Are you trying to say that corruption is in this department? Let's just say that there is a killer within law enforcement. He's on top of the game. He know just how much ground to take and when to back off. He would know when he's got the green light and when to change his plans. He'd be hard to catch. Sloan, I feel you're creating problems. Yeah, I think, uh, I feel you're giving law enforcement a bad reputation because you've got a, you think that someone in law enforcement could be involved or responsible for these missing people. Well, I feel that it needs to be investigated because we've got, it's possible that the killer has a resentment towards quick-tempered people and uh, people that use vertical abuse. Well, I don't agree. People have been falsely accused on hearsay information just because someone thought they were guilty? What you're saying is true. Yet I've questioned the victim's family. He was afraid of hype. Now I just think that if he really wanted to commit suicide, he just wouldn't kill himself in that way. Well, when the victim attempted suicide, he did it with sleeping pills. He left the empty bottles in plain view for his wife to see. He was counting on her to see them. He wasn't wanting to die. He knows she saved him. For a better judgment, I think we should call in the forensic team. You know, they don't expect foul play. They want to go on with a funeral, and get him in the ground. I've got a friend that is a forensic expert. That's where I came from. And I can go back to the scene where the man was supposed to have jumped. And if there is another party, if there's any signs of foul play, if I can get any evidence, it will show up on DNA. After the test come back from the lab, we'll know who the killer is even if we can't prove it. What we got is nothing. What we got is all in Officer Denbo's mind. It's one thing to live in a fantasy world and 
have conspiracy theories, but it's another thing. We've got real crimes and real investigations, and this is reality. And we've got to get busy. We don't have time for fantasy. cost him his life. I just feel that the killer thinks that I know more on him than I really do. And if I don't get to him before he gets to me, I'm in serious trouble. Well, just take care of yourself, Dave. Howdy, ma'am. Uh, I'm Detective uh, Dave Sloan. I know this is a bad time, but I would like to talk to you about uh, the death of your husband. From the information that I have, uh, I just do not feel that he committed suicide. I feel that uh, there's foul play. My husband was a good law officer. 
until one night it his went in and on the drug bust and he just couldn't force himself to pull the trigger and his deputy got killed. Mr. Sloan, have you ever been married? I must confess, I didn't come back to the country just to help Officer Denbo with this case. But uh, I was wanting to settle down and start a new life for myself and possibly uh, get married. You know, sir, I just don't think Mr. Owens jumped from that two-story building. I just don't believe he'd commit suicide that way. You know, I agree. But if we could just find a suspect and turn him over to Big Chuck, that's all, that's all she wrote, boy. He'd take care of it. He'd get the answers. Mm-hmm. You coming here, somebody's gonna die. I'm warning you. Look, I got some questions to ask about Owen Carter. Now, what can anybody tell me? Come on. Come on. I want to hear your back snap. Chuck, uh, I just don't think that's ground to take and when to back off. He would know when he's got the green light and when to change his plans. He'd be hard to catch. Sloan, I feel you're creating problems. Yeah, I think, uh, I feel you're giving law enforcement a bad reputation because you've got a you think that someone in law enforcement could be involved or responsible for these missing people? Well, I feel that it needs to be investigated because we've got no leads. We've got no leads because it's all in your mind. Happy birthday to the king. <laughs>
bully. He failed the man. Yet I failed that he shoved Mr. Carter off that two-story building himself because uh, had anybody else to have done it, he would have caught up with it. I've got a suspect, just a gut feeling, nothing more. If I'm wrong, I'll be dismissed from this case, if I'm right. If I make him think that I know more on him than I really do, I just feel that he'll come out to me the same way that he came out to Mr. Carter. Chuck, uh, we're the only ones that uh, believe it's foul play. Time will tell. You know, Officer Scott, I seen that look in your eyes the day that I woke up in the hospital. You was hoping that I wouldn't wake up, or I would wake up as a vegetable. I know that you didn't put that man on me at the bar, but at the same time, uh, you was hoping he'd put the lights out before you got a chance to break it up. You was hoping that uh, I was unconscious and just glad that I went into a coma. You was just hoping it'd be for good. Where, where's your mind at in Disneyland? Make-believe world? What have you been doing, watching too many TV detective shows? It doesn't work that way. You just, uh... If all you got is your gut feeling, that only works once in a while. You, you shouldn't be working with us. You should be back in investigator school, learning to, how to uh, properly investigate. You should be back in school, learning how to be a complete lawman. I just don't feel that this killer kills for publicity. He feels that he's got a purpose. He could be a uh, law enforcement officer, he could be an outstanding citizen in the eyes of everyone in this community. He feels that he has a purpose. Look, Sloan, we don't know that there's a killer. Well, they said you were done for, but I see you're, uh, you're gonna be okay. Well, 
glad that you came to check on me. Officer Scott. Look, this silent treatment has got to go. Understand what we're talking about. No, this silent treatment, no. This case has been going on for too long. The information is needed. Too much involved. People's lives are at stake. Give us a break. We got the information right today. It's possible if there is foul play. I think it's a work of uh, a railroad killer, a copycat railroad killer, like the one in Texas. I still don't believe there really is any foul play. Nope. Don't believe it. Well, sure, Sergeant Scott thinks there's bad foul play. Now he thinks it's a hobo killer, a hobo that rides the rails and comes back and kills again. Looks like that case in Texas. I would suggest that we post more security at the railway stations. Well, why do you feel that it's a railroad killer like uh, the one in Texas? It's, uh, it's because he can come in town, do his thing without being seen, make a clean getaway, and be gone, and there's no suspicion, nobody sees anything, and he can be far away with, by the next day, and then come back the day after. And uh, it could be a hobo, a bum, a paying customer. I think we ought to check all out-of-towners more closely. All out -of so far is that the man was uh, killed at the river. His body was not transported. Now, uh, they're not ruling out foul play, uh, yet they feel it could be accident. The man could have been hit with a stray bullet from the hunting party. Do you think it's a case of that railroad killer, like out in Texas? I don't know. I'm just afraid that that's just what uh, someone wants us to think. We're clean. Are you trying to say that corruption is in this department? Let's just say that there is a killer within law enforcement. He's on top of the game. He know just how much ground to take and when to back off. He would know when he's got the green light and when to change his plans. He'd be hard to catch. Sloan, I feel you're creating problems. Yeah, I think, uh... I feel you're giving law enforcement a bad reputation because you've got a, you think that someone in law enforcement could be involved or responsible for these missing people. Well, I feel that it needs to be investigated because we've got no leads. We've got no leads because it's all in your mind. 
Happy birthday to the king. chance to get acquainted with your dogs. I feel that you should always cherish the memories of your husband and never let him die. Yet I feel that we should all go on with our lives and look for tomorrow. Everyone needs friendship. They need companionship. There may never be anyone to take your husband's place. Yet, it's good to have friends to turn to. I just want to encourage you to go on with your life because um, it's a gift. And I feel that uh, you should live it. I've been holding my own with the horses now, and uh, my double vision uh, is about to clear up. I'm ready to go back to work on the front line now. I'm just saying that the killer kills because he likes it. He could very well be a law enforcement officer, or ex-law enforcement officer if not in this county, another county. Explain yourself, Sloan. Okay, now take the deadbeat dads by killing them and putting them in the bottom of the river. There is no reason for anyone to expect foul play. There's no reason. Think about it. These men are running from the law, they're running from their families, they don't want to be found. So what you going to do? If it's foul play, who's to say that they didn't leave town? You're right. This does need to be investigated. By all means, it needs to be investigated. But I think you're on the wrong track. I think this is a copycat, a copycat railroad killer. Try our best. Sometimes it's not the best in the image of it. Shall I say, 
the society that we have today. But uh, as law enforcement officers, we try, like I said, we just try our best. Well, I speak about the images I recall. Image. You know, as law enforcement people, I guess we've got to consider good citizens. Well, uh, Officer Scott, I want to thank you personally for offering to work with me on this case. Well, I'm just thinking about the community, the uh the reason they gave me this badge was, this gold detective's badge was to uh, better the community, but I just don't see how you're going to make it. I know they've uh, offered you room and board and your expenses, but that's not going to be enough. Well, uh, I've been off this job working with horses, and if we ever get to the bottom of this case, uh, I'll get it full time. Thoroughbreds, I presume. And other mixes. But uh, really, uh, I love that type of work. And uh, I feel we can just get to the bottom of this, uh, I'll be happy. There's somebody else that works with horses once. Chuck, I don't wrong you for bringing Mr. Sloan in, but we have no proof of a crime. Cole, it's my gut feeling. I feel that this is, yes, this is the way it is. Well, I feel we've got nothing to lose. With the arrangements we've got with the taxpayers, it won't cost that much anyway. Well, I feel it's necessary to spend more tax. Mr. Dembo was on the police department in Garden City in Michigan, and uh, he was just too rough. They had to let him go. This is a poor county and a small sheriff's department. Good men are hard to find. Well, maybe it's too poor when it gets to the point that you have to hire bullies for lawmen. Chuck, did you get the information out of them you needed? Yes, I believe I got all the information I needed from the I fellow. Bet, I bet you did. Yes, he was responsible for the death of three people, but I took care of him by putting his lights out. At that point, then I knew for sure that he was responsible. You know, Chuck, you can't get by with that in law enforcement. Yeah, Chuck, I heard about that. But he killed a man in a bank robbery. Later, and they made the charges stick. Well, maybe they could have made the charges stick if Officer Denbo had gone about it in the right way.
Well, now that we have three people missing from this community, and I feel that it's, in all cases that it's murder. Well, there's no evidence of that. They could have all just left town. I don't believe they have. That's why that we have called in David, Detective David Sloan. Yeah, they say Sloan works off instinct. That's a good choice. Yeah, Detective Dave Sloan. He worked with us in law enforcement. He was good. Yeah, I remember Sloan. You know, he's a deputy sheriff and uh, he real good. Maybe he was a good deputy. And maybe he'd done his... And bring back the dough to your hand If God would but grant me the power Just to turn back the pain Today. I guess you're looking forward to the gunfight today. Absolutely, that's what I came for. Yes, I really enjoyed uh, the band and Milo and them singing Happy Birthday together. Look, what can you tell me about this body that was found in the river? I understand that you need a man. Foul play? I don't think there is any foul play. But, it's possible if there is foul play, I think it's the work of uh, a railroad killer, a copycat railroad killer, like the one in Texas. I still don't believe there really is any foul play. Nope. Don't believe it. Well, sure, Sergeant Scott thinks there's bad and foul play. Now, he thinks it's a hobo killer, a hobo that rides the rails and comes back and kills again. It's like that case in Texas. I would suggest that we post more security at the railway stations. Well, why do you feel that it's a railroad killer like uh, the one in Texas? It's, uh, it's because he can come in town, do his thing without being seen, make a clean getaway, and be gone, and there's no suspicion, nobody sees anything, and he can be far away with, by the next day, and then come back the day after. And uh, it could be a Obo, a bum, a paying customer. I think we ought to check all out of towners more closely. All out of towners. <laughs> but I don't think so. I just don't think so. No, it's not the railroad killer because you don't want it to be the railroad killer. Well, well, uh, Officer Scott, I think we're going to solve this case. I've been collecting samples of DNA from uh, each missing person, the place they were last seen. Now, if the opposite party's DNA matches up, to all these things where each missing person was last seen, I think we got a killer. I've got a few more collections to make, and then I'm gonna send them off to my friend in uh, Maryland. He's a forensic expert.
Well, uh, Sergeant Scott, I've been expecting you. You know, uh, this lies missing person who did a lot of smoking this old car. I just feel he left enough DNA behind to convict uh, the killer. Well, Sloan, what triggered you off? Well, Officer Scott, I knew that you were guilty all the time. I mean, your stories just, uh, they didn't match up. Uh, I'm sure you've been on the other side where you've been questioning the suspect and uh, you knew they were lying. Well, Sheriff, don't you think it's been a murder in the community? Now, I know you don't want it to be no murder, but don't you feel that it is? It's not important what I think. Look, it's our job to protect the citizens against rape, robbery, murder. We can't shut down the whole force just on kind of this case. Well, there's no signs of foul play here. The people missing are uh, street people, hobos and bums. They have a history of drifting around from town to town. No, no foul play here. I think Officer Denbo is dreaming again, and I think uh, his imagination's gone a little too far.
Thank you. Good to see you out here today. I guess you're looking forward to the gun fight today. Absolutely. That's what I came for. Yes, I really enjoyed uh, the band and Milo and them singing happy birthday together. Look, what can you tell me about this body that was found in the river? Understand that you need a man. Foul play. I don't think there is any foul play. But it's possible if there is foul play, I think it's a work of uh, a railroad killer, a copycat railroad killer, like the one in Texas. I still don't believe there really is any foul play. Nope.